three days into 2022, I realized that not a lot of people know how to code and a lot of people are trying to find out where to start. And the people who have started, they don't know what to do next. So in this video, I'm going to share with you all how to learn to code in 2022. So let's get to it. This year, given all the resources, time, things that are going on, there are five main things that you want to do to make sure you learn how to code quickly and easily. The first thing is you want to take a fundamental beginner's course for Python. Now, why Python? Well, Python was the number one language in 2021, and I don't think it's going to be dethroned anytime soon in 2022. So learning Python already sets you ahead of other developers because it is a language that is used by a lot of companies because it allows you to understand uh, algorithms, data science, uh, web scraping, and a bunch of other fields of computer science. And believe it or not, Python's are a really easy language to learn. Like if you look at the syntax of it and compare it to the syntax of a language like C or Go, it is way easier. In fact, it's like English was transformed into code. And that's why Python is just a very easy language to pick up and a lot of beginners usually start with Python as their first language. That's kind of interesting to see because a lot of experts are using Python in the workforce. So it's like Python is a great language to learn for beginners, intermediates, and advanced programmers. And the reason you want to take a fundamental programming course is because these courses are designed so a newbie can learn data structures, they can learn how to traverse linked lists, they can learn how to traverse binary trees, how to create their own algorithms. And honestly, a fundamental programmer course is essential for every programmer in today's day and age so that way you don't waste time trying to explore thousands of YouTube videos on how to learn to code when you just watch a nice course and already be jump started in your programming career. Now, I'll be honest, there's no reason you should be paying for a beginner's programming course because there's a bunch of courses online that are free and teach you how to use Python from start to finish. You can find a ton of them on YouTube. So just use one of these free courses to really jumpstart your programming career. So don't think learning how to code is going to empty your pockets because it won't. It's actually gonna fill them so much that there'll probably be tears in your pockets. Before we proceed to the next step, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Samurai Saga. Samurai Saga is a samurai-based NFT project with amazing looking art and an even better purpose. If you get one of these samurai NFTs, you can use your samurai NFT to be the avatar in the samurai metaverse game that this project offers. In this game, you can explore the world of samurai as your samurai NFT, and the game looks sick. It looks like something from a top gaming studio. The launch for this project is January 6th and already has a large 100,000 plus member community supporting it. So you want to join this community and make sure you get this NFT and be sure to click the link in the description below. I'll see you all in the Samurai Metaverse. So the next step is to create your own simple project or follow a tutorial. See, creating a project is the best way to learn and I've always believed this since the day I started programming, which is like seven years ago. Time flies. Because when you are creating your own project or even following a tutorial, you're experiencing realistic struggles. You're having to go through the thousands of bugs you'll get and the pain, stress, anxiety that comes with being a programmer. And you need to pay your due diligence because you can't be a programmer if you haven't gone through the five stages of denial or grief. Sometimes creating your own project this early in your programming career can be kind of daunting. So that's why I would recommend following tutorial. In fact, this is what I did. When I created my first app, I just literally just followed tutorial and reskinned it a little bit, added a bit of my own twist to make myself feel like I actually did something I didn't just copy code. But following a tutorial or creating your own simple game is a great way to expose yourself to real life programming and it's a great way to actually apply what you have learned because yes, it's good that, that you learn how to use integers, strings, arrays, hash tables, but can you actually use them in the real world? Can you actually make something of that? Even if you want to create your own project, no one is expecting you to create the next program for Tesla that will automate car transportation. Create something simple like snake or tic-tac-toe or Pac-Man. That right there is enough to really apply what you've learned so far in your fundamental beginner programming course. The third step is to learn front-end design. Front-end design is basically the design of all the UI uh, elements and stuff that a user can visibly interact with on a website slash web app. Most front-end applications are created using JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Learning this trifecta will set you up to be able to create your own UI, build your own websites, and also you make nice looking things. And that leads to really how you can be a master of front end design. That's honestly just by practice and building your own UI and websites. And trust me, it only takes probably an hour to build a nice looking UI if you have enough practice. The reason you should learn front end design, even if you like you know building algorithms and back end stuff, because it sets you up to understand full stack development. Now, before I talk about engaging in full stack development, I do want to include that you should also learn how to store data on web apps, either using MongoDB or other database libraries slash frameworks, because that's just a nice added skill to have. And at that point, if you're able to do that and you're able to build a nice front end, then you can really create an entire website. And this will allow you to have freelancing gigs and make some side money right away. And that leads you to our fourth step, engaging in full stack development. Now, full stack development is basically when you create 
everything of an application from what goes on behind the scenes and the stuff that the user can visibly see and interact with like the UI. Now, being a full stack developer is probably the ultimate goal that you should have as a programmer because that shows that you can do it all. And if you can do it all, then that means you can get any job as a programmer. And that's where you're making six figures, maybe even seven figures if you're that lucky to create your own software business. Now, the best way to engage in full stack development is, you know, really create an app, create a nice website, sell to people, and that just builds your experience, builds your uh, resume. And at that point, like I said, you're hireable and you can get a full-time job. So literally within three months of hard work and dedication, you can probably get a full-time job from being a novice programmer to being a full stack app developer. And now once you're a full stack developer, you can really do anything you want. So the fifth step is like a bonus step and that is to branch out into other languages and frameworks. Now I say this because it's cool that you know Python, maybe you picked up two or three languages as well along the way, but being able to understand multiple languages from high level to low level really open yourself up to new perspectives. Like your goal is to build a database of knowledge in terms of programming languages, frameworks, how to attack this algorithm, how to solve this coding problem, etc. And by exploring new languages, you open yourself up to new situations, new problems, new solutions, and that just makes you a more skilled programmer in general. Like after all, if you don't code in C, then you never understand why programmers are always frustrated. These are the five tips I would give to anyone who's trying to learn how to code in 2022. There's just too many resources, too much data that you can use to really jumpstart your career and you know jump hurdles, uh, five hurdles at a time, to really make yourself a strong, dedicated programmer in no time at all. So if you enjoyed any of these tips, be sure to comment down below which tip was your favorite. Be sure to check out Samurai Saga, and I'll see you all in the next video or maybe in the metaverse.